Hello, everybody, and welcome. Welcome to the first look of the Hay and Forage Pack coming to Farming Simulator 22 on Tuesday, June 13th. How is everybody doing tonight? Tookie, Donald, what's up? Sipper and Waylon. Everybody is here in chat. I've got it all. I've got it all laid out. We're going to take a look at everything. And there's a couple, couple interesting surprises in the pack that we didn't know about until today. How is everybody's Friday evening going? I've got a pin just in case you wish to pre-order this after you take a look and see what is available in the pack and how it all works. I've got that pinned in chat. Remember, if you are already owning the year two season pass, well, you already own it. You just got to wait for it to release. Oh, you're working in ATS. Working in ATS, are you? We're also going to be showing off some new, new in-game FK merch in the Wardrobe Plus pack that Schultz is working up for us. Seeing it all laid out here, it's a bit more really than I was... Uh, I was initially thinking it was just by looking at the DLC listings page. And to, uh, to kind of show this off, we are here on Erlengrot, right? The map that came with the original Alpine expansion in FS19. Since lots of folks, including myself, feel this is kind of somewhat an Alpine expansion part two but what better place to show this stuff off at have your questions ready we're going to show off all the equipment as soon as we get into the live show and then we're going to run down everything all the details in the shop we've got it all laid out here we're going to use it all tonight check it out in as much detail as possible Show it off, answer everyone's questions as best we can. Again, so you can get a good understanding of, is this something I want to buy? Or is this something I want to pass on? It's perfectly fine if you want to pass on it. It's perfectly fine if you want to buy it. But what we're hoping to do is give you a little bit of a an education on what exactly to expect. So you can make as informed the decision as possible. Anyway, I've had a busy afternoon. I was out of town since Wednesday night. Got back in town around about, I don't know, four and a half hours ago. Got a map video done and released. That just dropped maybe about, maybe about uh, an hour ago or so, maybe less. Chris, you go check that out. Pretty nice looking European map. Scored okay, but just a few little, few little niggles on why it scored there. But it looks like a pretty decent map. Encourage you to check that out. And then of course, stick around for this. Has anybody watched any other early access videos or streams on this to date? The embargo on this dropped early this morning for those of us here in the East Coast.
The one thing I noticed when prepping all this stuff, basically all of the vehicles other than the walk-behinds all have four-wheel steer options. Remember, Ritter is a brand that specializes exclusively on wind rowers. Specifically belt driven wind rowers with an interesting pickup. Then we have the death mower and something brand new. Didn't even know about until I installed this last night. We have a walk behind a wind rower. The same brand as the death mower. Oh, I do not know. And I won't be able to show that off Pookie because as is typical with my first look live streams, I am running as minimal mods as possible. That way, everything you see here, we know 100% is a byproduct of this pack so i don't have the uh any of the near systems other than what is base game and i don't think we have any of that stuff base game equipment now maybe i can pull it up uh for our live stream tomorrow tomorrow we plan on live streaming a first look at this yet again We'll be talking more about stuff and we'll be showing more things off that we learned. And I could probably pull up that linear pack. I think there is a linear pack out on the Giants website, right? Let me look real quick. We got another two or so minutes before we're going to get started. Let people come in. Looking on the giant spot hub now for that linear pack. I feel like I saw it, but I'm not seeing it here. Classic. Giants might have an inability to search anything useful. If someone has a link to it, I would love to see. Like I said, I can compare that tomorrow. But tonight, we are running very, very few mods. In fact, the only mods I have installed are the mods I use when I take a look at maps. That is easy dev controls. Additional game settings, so we don't have that nasty little circle. Then we have the Warner Plus mods in order to get my uh, branded clothing. And uh, there you can see my brain, my clothing. We got farmers feeding the world since the dawn of time, and then we've got our bad. Bad Things Mayhem Crew Hat. We'll take a closer look at that later. And then we've got the DLC. That is all we have active. So if you see it on the screen, it is either obviously one, part of the base game, or two, part of the upcoming DLC. So we'll know if it has any cool new features or functions like the bail counter from... Uh, from the Gouville pack, I think that has the bail counter in it, as well as the Vermeer pack has the bail counter script. And then we also then, of course, got passengers with respect to Kubota.
it is time people it is time we have we have for ourselves first look at the hay and forge pack for farming simulator 22 coming to year two season pass owners or you can pick this up individually if you're on pc if you're on steam if you're on epic i've got a link pinged in comments if you want to pick this up after you see what is included it would be nice if you would use my referral link otherwise if you're on a console then you get it through your normal stores when it releases on january 13th and we're going to kick this all off we're going to go jump straight to the store jump straight to mods and dlcs hay and forage pack we're going to run through everything in the shop all the configuration options and then we're going to stay, start taking a look at how all of this machinery works we're here on erlengrot figured it was appropriate to take a look so we have the reform met me track h75 this thing is 75 horsepower variable cvt transmission 90 liters of fuel 24 miles per hour 2.6 tons for the choice of minus in standard tires bkt tires and then we have the choice of color That is the Reform Knee Track or Met Rack H75. Three point hitch on the front and a three point hitch on the rear. So it's PTO and hookups. We have a Ridge Track SASKH60. Very, very similar design to the Reform that we just looked at. But we have the option of standard tires or twin tires all around. Give this thing just a little bit more stability on the inclines. No option to change color on this thing. 75 horsepower once again. 75 liter fuel tank, so a little bit smaller fuel tank. 24 miles per hour, a little bit heavier. 3.5 tons with duals and 3.3 tons with singles. We have the Reform Mountie 110V. This is what I think people thought was electric. It is not electric. This thing is running off of diesel because it takes 110 liters of diesel and 14 liters of def. 109 horsepower, CVT transmission, 3.7 tons. And once again, 24 miles per hour. We've got the option of Michelin standard or twins all around. Or we have Midas, Verdstein. Then of course, we can change our license plate. Three-point hitch on the front and rear. We have the Reform Multi T8X. I call this the truck body. Universal body, whatever you want to call it. I'm calling it the truck body. 109 horsepower. Manual transmission. 120 liters of fuel. 14 liters of depth. 31 miles per hour top speed. 3.2 tons in its base configuration. We can get Midas standard tires or rear twins or twins all around. We also have the choice of Continental S tires, or kind of road tires. We have setup. We have a roof setup option. So design two has some lights up here up top. Design one takes those away, puts the plate down at the bottom. Beacon comes here around the back. You can see right there, but it's a beacon bar. So I've got that configured on the one that we have. So we'll see how that looks at. We can get a three point hitch on the front or just a standard pin hitch. I'm thinking that pin hitch is deco and not usable, but I've got mine configured with three point hitch. You can also change the color on the truck. There you go. We move up to the tipper. Truck body or trailer body for the truck. We can get tipper front guard. It's going to hold 2,400 liters for the product. We can get it with a bale trailer version. Bale trailer with front guard. Tipper without the front guard or tipper and front guard. And again, we can change its color of its frame. Got a hydraulic hose hook up there. We've got the... Prim Alpine. This is going to be the Forge Wagon trailer body. 13,900 liters worth of product. 1.6 tons and 10 mile per hour working speed. We can add a silage tank right here so we can get 
the benefits of silage additive and we can change its color to match our truck this is going to be using a rear pickup so we could match this with a three-point front hitch mower and then basically mow and pick grass up all at once we got the Brill Brill Meyer 29 EFI mower of doom this thing is 26 horsepower of pure death automatic transmission yeah it's called your feet that's your transmission no really it's self-propelled just walk behind it 10 liters of fuel four miles per hour 4.2 meter working width we can get it in a mower design and this is what is new we didn't know this until it just released we get this also in a wind rower variant to walk behind wind rower 2.2 meter working with option on that how about that then we have a series of mowers tornado 306 we can get it with or without lights take a look here at the warning plate there we have our lights three meter working with the tornado 306 plus three meter working with 65 horsepower no configuration options for the crone easy cut f320 island 65 horsepower 3.2 meters 13 mile per hour working speed no configuration options with a crone vendro 820 highland header 8.2 meter working with nine miles per hour 65 horsepower three point hitch pto connection no configuration options with a crone swadro s350 highland 30 mile per hour or 30 horsepower requirement 3.5 meter working with nine mile per hour no configuration options move into the ritter line i know i know schultz is interested in this segment of the video here we have a front three point hitch three meter wind rower it's going to should pitch out either way what makes this design interesting is it slides on these discs on the ground and we have a very quick and gentle pickup to get onto the belt and then it's going to slide either way we have the rest pro r7rd this is again a front three point hitch connection but it is designed to be used with probably rear drive tractors because it does have the warning label and then you're going to drive through the field forward you're going to flip your drive around and drive backwards doing this and then we have a seven meter working with again likely we're going to be able to pitch either way we're going to validate that here in a little bit the res pro r9 profi nine meter trailed wind rower here you get a good look at the discs that this runs on and slides on the ground then we have our little pickup here picking up onto the belt we get this in trelleberg tires bkt tires Vertistein tires 130 horsepower 12 miles per hour With the pottinger top 1403 c wind rower 115 horsepower 14 meter working with nine mile per hour top speed now this one has quite a few configuration options we get Verstein tires, BKT wide tires. Then we have a spare wheel. So take a look right here. Right here is a wheel. I can't zoom anymore. We can turn that off and the wheel goes away. We have swath curtain. That is referring to this thing down here. So we can turn that on and off. Multi, multi-tast. I really don't know what that is. But what it is, is this right here. There's four wheels that are in, they're on booms. And they're out here in front of these wind rowers. We can turn those on and off. So you see those come and go. We'll see how they might work in the field in a little bit. And then we're done. Once we take a look at the Pottinger Jumbo 8450 DB Forage Wagon. 43,000, 47,300, sorry, liters worth of capacity. 
250 horsepower requirement, 10 mile per hour working speed. Lots of options here. Rabbit Rob, you're interrupting the story. Oh man, oh man, you got yourself 24 months of Farm King membership. Thank you very much, sir. Thank you for being Farm King. All right, now that's gone. Now this is an interesting one. We haven't really seen this yet as best as I know. This is clearly a forage wagon. We have the, imp we have the pickup here in the front. Well, we could take the imp imp pick oh, ugh. We can take the pickup away. Boom, now it's gone. I don't, you're not gonna be picking it up anymore. Now it just turns it over to a, uh, a, a trailer, a forage trailer. So we can add the pickup back. We can take it away. Kind of interesting. Trelleberg tires, Michelin standard or wide. BKT tires, Vertistein standard or wide. Billboard is around the back. Everyone needs agriculture. We can turn that on or off. Cover. We get a nice mesh cover that'll flip down. Flip back up to cover your product. And we can get a silage additive tank added to the mix right there. And that is everything that is included in the hay and forage pack. Farming Simulator 22 and the year two season pass. Let's take a closer look at this stuff. So we have cleared away a little bit. Now I've been told, I've been told that these are rubber. Well, you know what? They look a lot like steel to me, but I've been told these are rubber spikes. Maybe the rubber spikes that are steel tipped. At any rate, I would not want this thing rolling over me. All right, we got our sickle bar. We got our wheels. Now take a look. When I connect to this, I want you to take a look at the key area over here to the left of the center because it's got a little bit of an animation to it. Captain Kiwi, thank you for being a member for 17 months. Thank you very much. So when I when I enter this, take a look down at the key area. So the key area rotates and then it kind of flops down. We'll do it again. Kind of flops down. We got forward, we got reverse. Uh, we can tip it up. Tip it down. Oh, look at that. Oh, that was cool. Now I'm standing on the platform. Now I'm walking behind it. Oh, yeah, buddy. Of course, you can see the sickle bar animations down there. Lots of cool animations going on there. Let's go grab the wind rower portion of this thing. I didn't know anything about the wind rower until I installed this last night. See the animations of me tilting it up. And of course, we have our new 
merch merchandise here. Thank you, Schultz. And before we get too far into this, this video is brought to you by David and Walter Moss. Thank you for being farm barons. So we can ride on this one too. We can tilt it down. Uh, we have left swath enabled. And we can switch this to control Y. Right swath. Left swath. We can even do it while it's running. Nice. All right, let's do this. Let's ride it. Nice animations there. Grass being picked up and changing direction. Let's see what it looks like first person view. And let's change this. And then windrow it all together. Farmer, what is up? What is up? That's some nice animations here with respect to uneven terrain. We're seeing a rotational joint between the uh, wheels and the belt there. Pay attention to that. track reform those that are interested in what things look like on the inside we've got animations and lights order reverse animation oh we do have four wheel steer on this so we can toggle our steering mode very tight turning radius Don't get sick. Uh, we can change the front steer. And uh, we can change it to rear steer. That's a new one. Rear steer. Crab steering. Crab steer right. All wheel steering, front steering, rear steering.
Uh, let's take one of these wind rowers real quick. Actually, no. Let's grab a mower. Uh, Scrooge Workbench, the game is 1.10. 1.10.1. 1 is the release of the version that you'll need for the DLC. And so here we have the Tornado 306 mower. Let's mow a little bit more grass. We unfold our mower. We can shift our gray point left and right. Get a little bit of an angle tilt on there too. That's kind of neat. And then we got a really good flotation here following the contours. Time to see that contour following in cab here. Fourteen mile per hour mowing. I don't know. I feel that might be a little bit faster. Maybe it's because I'm in this little thing, but I feel like I'm mowing at a pretty dang good clip. A shifting linkage? What do you mean shifting linkage? This one's CBT. Oh, we got some nice animations down there on the PTO shaft. Vehicle is 75 horsepower. Uh, it's right, left click, and right click. Left click, left and right. Right click, left. Right click, right. So this vehicle is 75 horsepower. We'll go get the other mower and run it with the other vehicle. In this one. Let's take a look at our lights. So there are front lights. Front lights on our mower. We have rear lights and we have front headlights. We do have a beacon. We have flashing lights. Reverse. Brake. Uh, 
see what the mirrors look like. Oh, 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 what? What? Those mirrors actually don't look all that bad. Uh, let's change our steering mode. Do we have any sort of... Oh, lucky here. So, take a look at this screen right there, centered. It's showing us our steering. So right now we have, let's turn that off. Right now we have front, front steering. You see the front wheels are green and they're turned. I'm gonna change this to rear steering. Now the front wheels are straight and the rear wheels are green and turned. Now we have crab steering left. Both wheels are turned to the left. Crab steering right. Then we have all wheel steering. We have wheels left and right. So we can see a visual representation of our steering mode there. I don't see any representation of that anywhere. So that's kind of neat. For those that like to drive in cab. big turning or really small turning radius on this I'm gonna part that out of the way where is the other one there it is the ridge of track Where's the track? Let's see. Left click. Oh, this this time the mower shifts left and right. So it's the mowers that are shifting, not necessarily the uh, the vehicle. Left click. Now that's that's the vehicle that's got that shift. You see, he's using the uh, that second joystick. To make that. We have our steering modes. All wheel steer, front wheel steer, rear steering. Cramps. Do we see that change in cab here anywhere? No. This one does not have a display showing you your visual changes. Anything, any questions I miss, either just repeat it or uh, maybe one of the mods will be able to grab my attention just at me. Because we're trying to show things off at the same time as keep up with the stream. So yeah, this one's available in single or dual wheels. I like to add duals to this just to uh, get an idea of its width. Ah, uh, really? Is it cheaper? Let's see. It is not. It's more expensive. 103 versus 127. The Reform has got your uh, brand. Same horsepower. The Reform has more of a fuel tank. So Schultz is going to run out of fuel less often. As well as... Uh,
having a bit more cooler features. Headlights, front rears, beacon, flashers. No reverse lights, but we do have brakes. We've only looked at four things. There's only so many ways you can have a mower. It cuts grass. We've got curtains moving here. Oh, yes. Yes. This one might have like a leveling cap. There you go, look, we got a leveling cap. cab what does this one do this one does not have a leveling cab it is fixed you see that there then we have the reform mounty 110b Once again, we can change our steering direction. Front steer, rear steer, crab steer, left and right, and all wheel steer. Let's see if we have any visual. We do, we have different, we have different uh, lights to represent the different steering modes. So you see those changing on the dash. Uh, right click we can we can shift our front three point what are we gonna shift the rear Just shifting the break point front. We have our front headlights. We got our rears. We have our beacons. Third stage lights. We have our flashers. No reverse. We have our brake lights. This one's gonna flow to the ground fairly well too. Float on the ground. Fourteen mile per hour mowing. Decent mirror placement. Seriously not bad on the mirrors.
do one more pass on that. Uh, I took you no branded apparel. I took a look before the stream. I didn't see any. No branded hats, shirts, jackets. If there is some, it's hiding. This is Erlingrot. I thought we're better to show off this equipment than Erlingrot. And then we'll see. Lower deck conforms to the floats uh, and such. Yeah, we'll just drop it off over there. Check out our wind rower. Now, I did notice this floats. Floats on the ground, up and down. Uh, we can go left mode or right mode. Let's turn it on. We have we have right swamp. We have left swamp. We change that while it's running. I don't know if it's because it's small equipment, but it just feels fast to win with this stuff. Decent animations, if you can, if you can see those. So they're picking up the grass and turning it. just turned it around. Now we're windrowing out the other way. AJ Wiggums, how are you doing today? I'm doing mighty fine. Having fun showing this off for you guys. So you all can make informed decisions as to if you want to pick this up or give it a pass. It's 
because quite frankly, it doesn't matter to me, right? If you like it or not, that's a personal decision you have to make. $8.99 early pre-order on that, save a buck. If you are on a PC, you want to get it from the Giants Mod Hub. I did link my affiliate link in the chat there. Push this out of the way. Oh, uh, let's see here. Let's, let's toy with the tether a little bit. So, fairly standard tether, I think. We got some interesting animations, though, on, on attach and detach. We have a little stand that kicks out the back. Unfold. Nice sounds. All right. Nice animations. It's conforming to the ground fairly well. The working speed. I mean, I think if you if you do grass work, my thoughts are, if you do a lot of grass work, eight ninety nine. Unless you never do grass work small. If you only do grass work with giant machines on on big flat fields, then you're probably not going to use this pack. But I'm thinking if you do grass work and you sometimes play on smaller fields, tighter locations, I think this pack has got a lot. A lot that could, uh, could benefit you in the right conditions. Go check this little wind rower out. Unfold it. Uh, it's no changing its direction. Fold animation. There you go. Straightforward one windrow, basically with windrow right here. And we're using a little old Reform 110V. All the vehicles are four wheel steer. I mean, I think little stuff like this. Like, even the walk behind mower that we did right at the start I think that would be an excellent mower to do right up along a fence line 
and the walk behind wind rower or this wind rower could be you know an excellent option for right along a fence line and then bring out your bigger stuff like edge the field with a small mower and a small wind rower and then bring out the bigger stuff when you are kind of you know filling it out finishing the field up We need to buy something that has um, reverse drive. Because I want to show off the next reform or ritter. Oh, so I want to show off the next ritter wind rower. So this is designed for you to transport. Right? Drive it to the field. Unfold it. Change your driving direction. And now that we have changed our driving direction, we're going to turn it on. So we can fold right. Did you see that, Lachis? The belts are independent, and they change at different speed. Oh, ha, ha, ha. oh, wait, what the hell is that? Oh, now we're, oh. Are you kidding me? Now we're going to the outside. We're going left and right. Watch this. But Ren, we're going left and right. Are you freaking kidding me? We're wind rowing left and right. Or we can go left mode only. Right? Or we can go right mode only. Watch. Oh, watch this. Watch this. We're going to shift, and it doesn't do it automatically. Or it doesn't do it. Like, it's still. They were going outside. Like there, there's a little delay. So I'm gonna shift it to the right, right now. There's a little delay as it kind of continues to move product as it reverses the belt. See what it looks like inside. Animations here. Is there any other wind rower that we can do outside? We can do a left and right. That was pretty slick. That's fine, Golden Eye. That's fine. I'm not here to talk you into buying anything. I'm here to show you what it's like and let you make your own decisions.
All right, let's grab the next piece of kit. Farmer, I don't think I don't think folks would know what the heck was going on. Uh, you need to unfold the merger before you can uh, disconnect it. Since I'm in this one, I might as well. All right, this one we can work mode to the middle. Oh, 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 oh. just see that? As <laughs> you see that? In the middle. All right. So it splits it out. Brings it together, and now we're going to the left. Now we're going to the right. Now we're going outside. So we're left and right output. Or we go to the middle. Ah, 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 that's so cool. I'm sorry. This is just, you know. So we're going to our right. to the left, right, now we're going in middle, or either out, we're going to the right, right, now we're going left and right, it's, it's not working so well because we've got a single windrow. We're splitting it again. Or now we can bring it to the middle. And now we're wind rowing on the left side to the middle and the right side to the middle. That's kind of neat. something bigger the next then we have a ginormous Hottinger wind rower see this thing fold up We got like animations on the locking clamp. Look at that. Look at that.
get this over here. Now this one wind rose at the normal nine miles an hour. Those other ones were a lot faster. At what, 12? 30% faster? Uh, Donald, it's... A wide wind rower is a wide wind rower. This was not a mod in 19 because this has subtle differences. be like saying a 500 horsepower tractor in 19 and a 500 horsepower tractor in 22 it's just the same at this age of development wind rowers they all look very very similar they all function fairly similar but there's just little unique things that make one brand different from another. Like these lead lead wheels, that lead wheel right there, that's a configuration option you turn on or off. I don't know what benefit it is. I don't know if it, it's supposedly, you know, if it, if it follows the contour of the ground better because of it. This one we can configure with that spare wheel right there, on or off. And then the animations. And then the, the engaging, the locking clip there. That is neat. To lock it in. Let's go grab this truck. We haven't looked at this yet. Oh, we got an animation on a fan back there, the cooling fan. We have the same reform display down here that's going to show us our different steering angles. I don't know if you can see that changing down there on that small screen. So we have our lights, we have our first stage lights, we have our rear lights, we have our third stage lights, we've got our beacon bar on the top here. We have reverse flashers, we have our brakes. Uh, let's see here, we have lower our pickup. So we've got some differential with respect to the cab and the uh, the rear body, the rear frame. They're twisting at different. They've got a rotator joint there. operated you can see the spring compressing as the crank is cranking I'm seeing this stuff for the first time with you guys
of course you could have a mower on the front of this mowing and picking grass up in one pass we did configure this with a silage additive tank Talking about seat suspension all. I have no idea what you're talking about. I mean, the seat does go up and down. Saw this unload animation again. I thought that was pretty neat. So it drops the pickup, then it unfolds this this dark colored thing, and then the thing picks up. on the latch there. bit of kit to show off without showing off the tipper maybe we'll add some grain to that and see how it unloads in a minute so we can open and close the cover if you buy that configuration option You get with a silage additive tank or not. Oddly, you can get this with or without a pickup, too.
see how that's working. It's going to open and close that door. And right mouse button up and down is going to adjust the hitch. Of course, we were picking up hay, we were picking up grass. The game was negating all of our hay when we got grass and vice versa. Now let's detach this. Hook it up. You see we got hoses here on the side. When we unhook it, they just hang there. And let's go ahead and just add some product to this trailer. It almost feels Schultz like the uh, the two large Pottinger things are added as a way of providing something big for people who want to play with big machinery. We have an option of uh, tip side back, tip side left, tip side right. There's tip side back, tip side left. Oh, that's neat. We got like a tether there. So check this, check this out. When we when we change our tip side, the uh, the pins, the pins move. Tip side back. You see, there's two pins. There's no pin. There's no pin here, right? Because it's got a tip up. The pins are here in the back, right? But if I do tip side left, now there's a pin on this side and the rear, and this side has no pin, and this side has no pin. And if I do that, look, pins are going from there, and the pins are now over here. And then when we tip, we've got this tether cable that's kind of neat Doug what's up
Let's hook this up. shift right shift now that's part of the mower we learned we don't have the corresponding left right shift your more traditional setup that you would see with this configuration. Uh, Farming says this this was not a DLC in 19. This is different equipment than the DLC from 19. There was an Alpine farming expansion that did include equipment that was similar to this, but this is not that, and that is not this. They're not updates, they're different brands. It's different equipment. It's different functionality. We could also say that FS-17 was just FS-19 without mods, right? We could say FS-22 is just FS-19. It's an incorrect statement. But well, we can make that statement. But there's no no arguing that yes, there was an Alpine expansion in 19. That's why we're on this map. To nod to that there was an Alpine expansion in 19. And as I said to start a stream, this is like the Alpine expansion part two. But it is very much not the same. In FS19, we had more trailer bodies to the linear truck body. This is reform, different brand, different functions. The wind rowers are in no way like anything that we have seen to date. That worked pretty darn good. Now this one, with self-leveling, that's pretty neat. Self-leveling cab. Uh, 
uh, Doug, I don't know if they're running. Running out of ideas is a pretty... Pretty bold claim. And I'm gonna tell you, I'm gonna tell you something. This DLC was in the works before Farm Sim 22 ever released. Okay? So this DLC was in the works before November 2021. Why do I know this or how do I know this? Because of the lack of as farming sense kind of mentioned because of the lack of the farming or the alpine expansion equipment in the base game of 22 it makes me feel that the reason a lot of the alpine farming stuff that we did get in 19 didn't make its way into 22 was because this hack was already planned. This pack with Reform, with this Rigid Track, with Ritter, was already planned. And therefore, they didn't include as much of the Alpine farming stuff as we may have originally expected them to include. There you got the self leveling cap. So this isn't something that Giant dreamt up last year, earlier in this year. This, I am almost 100% certain, was something that was being worked and was in working progress before FS22 ever released. So I wanted to move that. But it's fun. It's not going to be for everyone. If you're not into it, it's fun. Now we can go, oh look, we're going faster. We go seven miles an hour when we are riding it. But we only go five when we're walking. Let's ride this darn thing. Americans do hay is very different than the way Europeans do hay because the US is significantly drier than a lot of Europe. Definitely England. So where grass hay can naturally dry on its own around here in Europe, it needs a bit of an incentive to do that because of just the uh, the weather conditions, the ground conditions. And then we can get that in a wind rower variant.
right and we can windrow left or right Seven miles an hour riding this thing. As I was saying earlier, I envisioned, I envisioned like this ride on sickle bar mower or this ride on wind rower as being something that you would, you would use to mow around a, uh, a fence or mow around the edge of a field. Uh, Richard, I have absolutely no idea. Why any one piece of equipment has a different working speed than another. Right? So let me show you what I mean. I think a perfect place to use this would be like over here. along the edge of a field or along the edge of a road where you wanted to have some kind of better control and then once you kind of edge the area you could come back and and do the rest of the field with with maybe bigger machinery. Right? That's one that's one concept that I had. You could use this as kind of a kind of like a push mower in a yard. Right? To, uh, to edge the field Mow around things like trees and such and then use your bigger machinery to, uh, to grab the rest of the field I think Hoff Brennan would be a great map for this type of stuff. Well, I'm hoping Genetic J with the opening of the Chicago office now officially that there would be more um, North American style machinery. Given the, given the time of development though, I wouldn't expect to really see that benefit of the Chicago office until the next release of whatever the next game is. This one is, as I said, I feel a lot more functional than the smaller version in nineteen 
19 that we now have in the base game. Uh, Richard, I don't think the... I don't think... I don't think part pack 3. What do you mean free DLC? The free DLC. What do you mean by the free DLC? Of, of a free DLC? Uh, I don't know why the spike wheels are than just traction on the ground. Maybe maybe a little bit of aeration benefit. Maybe you're aerating the ground while you're using it. Richard, I don't know what you're basing that information off of. There's five DLC in the year two season pass. None of them are free. Yes, but none of them are free. Look at that right here. Are you, are you a bonus pack? Do you think the word a bonus pack means free? I'm taking the wording as a bonus pack, meaning we're not giving you a hint. So therefore, it's a complete and total surprise. That's that's what I am. That's how I'm taking that to be. I'm taking a bonus pack as being something that is a complete and total surprise. so confident that all right thanks for running by farming sins see so here I'm kind of doing that concept of kind of wind rowing close to the edge of the field getting things a little bit further away so I can come in here with bigger machinery and it not be that big of a deal. The AG1 was never listed as part of the year one season pass. AG1 was a total surprise to uh, everyone. We did get some mods from FarmCon. We've got we got an old uh, an older style John Deere, and I think we got like a small John Deere tractor as kind of FarmCon bonus mods. Maybe we'll be get some Dutz Far mods as a result of FarmCon and Dutz Far.
I would personally believe we're not going to see Pack 3 until August. It's going to be my expectation. Early August would be my guess. And then pack four I would expect to be October. And then pack five I would expect to be late November, early December. That would be my general assumption on the timing. mower is biggest oh this pack we've got a three meter three meter 3.2 meter okay so this is the biggest of the two three, three. So this this one is more expensive of the two kind of low to the grounds, but the self-leveling cab on this makes it really interesting. I would, I would think if, if Giants made a free DLC included in the year two season pass, people would be frustrated and I think they would have a very good right to be frustrated because they spent money with the impression they were paying for five paid things. And then if one of those paid things ends up becoming a free thing, I would be myself very upset. I bought five things and one of those five things turned out to be free, which devalues my purchase. Now, of course, I made the assumption that all five things listed in a paid DLC would end up being released as paid things. I don't think that's too far of an assumption to make. So I am very much expecting five paid things. Part of year two season pass. If there's a sixth thing that ends up having no cost to it, well, that's we're better for that. That's fine. We also get content updates periodically. We just get new stuff added to the game as part of uh, an update patch, right? You can look at those as free DLCs. They're just not things you can select or unselect. The most recent with that was the, uh, the new Baylors from Massey Ferguson and Crone. And the two new Massey Ferguson tractors. I think that was part of what? Update 1.9? I think it was part of update 1.8. And, you know, there's, there's people that pre-order the season pass to get a little bit of a bonus. Others sit and wait. See what what's all the content that comes out. And only after they know what the content that comes out do they make that value decision. Yeah, the DLC I want to buy, is it cheaper to buy the DLC separate or is it cheaper to buy the pack? And if it's cheaper to buy the pack, that's what they do.
to some degree you buy it early it's a gamble right you gamble on if the uh, if it's going to be worth it or not no, I don't want that I want this Ah, uh, yeah. Oh, we got bail storage, yep. Wait, we're getting all... We're getting all kinds of things just added in. You could consider that free content, right? Now this doesn't have self-leveling cab, but the cab does look a bit more sophisticated. This one is actually cheaper. I don't know if these mowers mow faster or again because of where we are with relations with ground or lower to the ground but I feel that we are going a lot faster than a normal mower and the four wheel steer on these is pretty darn good So based on what you have seen, what what's your all's thoughts on this pack? Has it changed your thoughts at all? Not that that was my goal. My goal was simply to show this off as best as I could. Demonstrate the functionality. And let you all see it as best as possible. And uh, make your own decision. One more round with this, and then we'll grab the mighty 110V. Uh, is a class Jaguar? Does it work well on sloped terrain? I don't know. I mean, other than the big Pottinger, wind rower, and forage wagon, all of this stuff is pretty low center of gravity. You're going to be very safe on a sloped, sloped terrain compared to, say, something like a, a big M, which is very high center of gravity.
Back up the truck. Yeah, Richard, that's what I said it was when we started the stream. Facing Alpine Expansion from FS19 Part 2. Called the Hay and Forge Pack for Farm Sim 22. Crazy. Well, I mean, yeah. I don't think anyone uses every piece of machinery every day on their farm. There's a time and a place for everything. There's a different map for different types of machinery. It has some interesting new functionality that we have yet to see in mowers, that we've yet to see in wind rowers. Like what we've seen with this mower is we have the ability to shift the whole mower left and right. Now that's not a feature of the tractor. That is a feature of the mower. But a feature of the tractor is the ability to do this. Because here we're shifting the whole three-point hitch left and right. That is a function of the tractor. This is a function of the mower. We can do all wheel steer, front steer, rear steer, perhaps steer with all of the machinery. Or all the vehicles. Walter, what's up? thing is you know companies aren't super motivated to license classic machinery I agree I think it would be really great to see stuff from several different decades of past 
but the issue is manufacturers are not so motivated on providing that stuff because this game to them is a marketing opportunity and they don't see much benefit in marketing vehicles, implements, tractors that were sold in the 80s. They see marketing opportunity for the 2023 model of whatever they have. They want the 2023 model in game so so kids can play with it. Maybe young adults can play with it. Maybe they then are interested in checking it out in real life and buying it. So it can be a hard sell for classic machinery. Yeah, I think it could be a negotiable item. And I think it's important to make sure Giants is aware that's, that's something the player base is interested in. Because they could negotiate with the brand and say, hey, Right, I, I know you want your 2023 stuff. I know you want your 2024 stuff. Can we can we also get let's say for every for every two new things you provide, right? For every 2024 model, for every two 2024 models, can we also license one of your your best sellers from a previous generation of product right and then explain there's a large portion of the player base that's interested in reliving their childhood using machinery that they grew up using or seeing using machinery they see in use in their daily lives now so, you know, yes, we can we can do the 2024 stuff. We'll gladly add the 2024 stuff. But let's let's see about adding for every two 2024 things. Let's add something from let's say the early 2000s, the 1990s, the 1980s type of an idea. All right, let's show off this awesome super cool. Let's show off this bad boy. This thing was cool. You didn't get to see this earlier. This thing is neat. All right, look, we're gonna wind road to the middle. Right, went right into the middle. That's cool and all, right? How about we wind row to the left? No. Now we wind row into the right. Marty's vintage. He's older than classic.
nice animations on this with respect to the ground forming, ground following. And on this windrower, we could merge to the middle, merge left, merge right. go in the opposite direction oh now oh sorry no we're now we're wind rowing outside right we're wind rowing to the left and the right so we can wind row to the middle we can wind row left right or outside So that's an interesting merge mode, right? Now we're back to middle, left, right, outside. Do the reverse drive. Oh, yeah. Now we're going to go. And then this one does the same thing. So we can merge left. We can merge right. We can merge outside mode. And reverse drive. Really interesting setup here. Now, one final pitch before we close this out. Anybody on PC, if you don't own the year two season pass, if you like what you've seen here and you want to save a buck, you can pre order this by using the Giants eShop link pinned in the chat. I do get a little bit of a kickback. They say I get 7% of the sale. Woohoo! Whopping 7%. The Giants eShop is good for any release of the game on PC, Steam, Epic, or digital download. Of course, if you're still not sure, that's fine. That's fine.
right? But you, if you do own the year two season pass, then you already have this. You don't need to buy it. You're going to be able to download it on Tuesday, June 13th, when it releases to everybody. We're going to be hosting a launch party on June 12th at 8 p.m. Eastern. And that is because this DLC will be released at 6 p.m. Eastern time on June 12th because that is midnight CET and Giants releases DLCs at midnight CET on the digital eShop. That is not saying that it'll be released on Steam, Epic, or your console platform at that time, just that it will be released over on the Giants eShop. So we'll be hosting a multiplayer launch party here on Erlengrot. Any PC player that is interested in joining, using the new machinery, talking about the new machinery, giving your own views and thoughts on the new machinery, We'll be back tomorrow evening doing another pre-release live stream showing off more of this kit here on Erlengrot. Hope you all have enjoyed the stream. Do let me know down in the comments what your all's thoughts are on this pack. Have your thoughts changed at all? From what they were when it was first announced. I know, I know, it's not a pack for everyone. Well, that's fine. It is a pack for someone. And until next time, happy farming. <laughs>